afternoon and welcome back to the Ask Dr. Renee show. As you know, I'm your host, Dr. Renee, and this show is here to motivate and inspire you to live the life you deserve. Because let's face it, this is not a dress rehearsal. This is the only one we have, so we might as well live it up. All my guests have done that, which is why I bring them to you. So a few weeks ago, we had DJ Wiz from Kid and Play. We had Stephen mm -hmm. Russell Hartz, the lead singer of Troop and producer and songwriter of many of the songs of my childhood and teenage years. And we've had D Nice, we've had my money coach, Cassandra Cummings, and my other money coach, Draca Jones, my trading coach, Jay the Trader. So I just want to bring all these amazing stories to you so that you guys know anything is possible. It doesn't matter how you start, it's really how you finish. So today's guest is, of course, a part of that as well, Jason Weaver. And if you do not know his name, you need to Google it, but you should really know his name because he's been on everything from the small screen. I mean, everything he's been, look, his voice has been on things. And of course, then of course he wrote, he made a CD. So <laughs> Jason, welcome to the show. And thank you so much for spending some time with me this afternoon. Thank you, Dr. Renee, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, yeah, I'm loving it. I'm so happy <laughs> to be here. Thank you. So Jason, I start all the shows the same. What did you want to do when you were a kid? What I'm doing now. <laughs> I, uh, so how no, did you, like, what did you see that you were like, you know what, that's what I want to do? Because I know you started very young. Yeah, I, I got in the business at the age of five. I started working professionally at five years old. Um, but I caught the acting bug or the bug to want to perform and be in front of the camera. Probably like around maybe four because I was, um, I was taken to the theater. My mom took me to the theater to see E.T. And so, I, of course, I was a huge E.T. fan as as well as many other kids in the right. 80s back then. <laughs> um, but I think the the performance that stood out to me the most was Drew Barrymore's performance because she was so young. I think around, we were damn near around the same, same I think age. So, yeah. And I was, um, I was just really captivated, you know, by her performance. And I was really blown away with her being so young. You know, how was she doing this? And how, how was all of that coming together? Were these her real brothers? And is this a real alien? And, <laughs> You know, and as things, as I began to learn more that it was like make believe and it was just movie magic. Um, I remember telling my mom, I was like, I, I want to do that. I want to, you know, do what she's doing. And it just so happened um, that my mother, shout out to my mom, Kitty Haywood, Marilyn Haywood, AKA Kitty Haywood, people in the jingle industry back in Chicago definitely know who my mom is. Uh, but my mom was, um, during the, I'd say mid to late seventies to early eighties on through up to the nineties, uh, was one of the more popular and sought after uh, local jingle singers in the city of Chicago. Um, she was also uh, a professional recording artist for a certain amount of time with her sisters. Um, they were called Kitty and the Haywoods. They had a, a group that, that they had put out years ago through Mercury Records uh, via the Ohio players who had like discovered them and worked with them. Uh, they also had a history of working with um, Curtis Mayfield and Aretha Franklin. They're actually on the uh, original Sparkle soundtrack with Aretha. So the, the original giving him something he can feel gotcha. that Aretha sang, that's my mother and my aunt on the background. Oh, wow. So I came up in a, in a musical family, in a family that was in entertainment. And so by the time I expressed a genuine interest and wanted to get involved, uh, my mother already had, you know, established uh, reputable relationships with people that um, could usher me into the game and give me a, a, a legitimate start or at least a, a pathway by which I could, you know, initiate and, and start my career. So pardon me, I just had some water. Um, it's okay. So um, I start off doing like print ads and commercials uh, at first, because that was really the only thing that was available to local talent in Chicago at that time, especially when it, uh, when it came to kids, it's not like how it is now where there's like an abundance of work over a bunch right. to some degree of work that's in the city. Now during that yeah. time, um, the opportunities were far in between because more or less like when a, a studio was shooting a film, they were either doing it in New York or they were doing it in Los Angeles. And, Chicago actors or Chicago in itself would kind of get overlooked. We would get flown over. So the thing that kept, you know, Chicago talent alive during those days uh, was commercials and print ads and maybe like small indie films back then. And if you were 
uh, really lucky enough that you were able to hop in like a John Hughes film or something like that. But there were hardly any people of color, black people in particular, right. that were in John Hughes films. So, you know, that that was how I started off. And, and I did that from the age of maybe five till about nine years old. Um, and then I got my first feature film, which was a film titled The Long Walk Home with Whoopi Goldberg and Sissy Spacey. And it was based around uh, two families, a white family and a black family during the Montgomery bus boycott um, of the civil rights movement. And we shot that in Montgomery, Alabama. And then from there, you know, my, my career just kind of gradually began to, you know, take off in a sin. That, that's kind of been my journey. Yeah. I haven't had that, um, I haven't had like that meteoric rise where it's like, oh, he just comes out of nowhere. Now he's just all <laughs> over the place. Is is my journey has not been that, and to be honest with you, I'm I'm thankful for that. I was my gonna say, has, but steady is fine. Yeah, steady is fine, and and it's allowed me to, you know, within that that gradual climb or ascension, if you will, maintain my sanity, you know, throughout the course of it. Because I I was a kid that came up in the industry, and my journey, I was fortunate enough to be able to have one foot in the industry, and work on a somewhat consistent basis on very notable, you know, projects and very highly celebrated and respected projects. But at the same time, I was still able to, you know, maintain and have a, a, a sense of my childhood and like an upbringing in my neighborhood with my friends and going to school. And so um, I've been very, very blessed and very, very fortunate. And, you know, God is just continuing to put new opportunities into my life, uh, which I'm thankful for. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I've I've worked with some amazing people. Like what I stated about work, working with a uh, with Whoopi and Sissy Spacek. Yeah. I, immediately after that, I worked with Oprah. Um, on not the women of Brewster Place, but it was a series adaptation of I remember the mini series, right? Yep. And um, we shot that in Chicago at Harpo Studios, which at that time was located in the West Loop. Yes, on Randolph <laughs> and um. On, Rand on Randolph Washington and like right. Randolph Washington and I forgot the other street, but yeah, yeah, but right there in that meat packing district. Yep. And um, and now and it's McDonald's. Before, it's Hamburger yeah, University. It's, oh, it's Hamburger University. Oh now. yeah, they tore the oh. whole thing down and they built up. They moved the headquarters of McDonald's from Oak Brook to there. I didn't know that. Okay, I just I just next time you go new. back, you have to go because they what they do have is this McDonald's is like innovative and has newer technology because this is Hamburger University. So they have oh, things God. that aren't seen yet any other McDonald's. It's very interesting. I've been a few times. Oh no, I'm gonna have to check that out because when I was home um shooting the shot, like what we were discussing early before yeah. we went live, I wasn't able to really go out and right. do a lot of things because we were in a bubble, we were trying to stay healthy and trying to stay alive. So, you know, as far as like going out and exploring the city and seeing some of the new things that have been going on, I didn't get a chance, but hopefully, you know, if and when we come back, yeah. I'm definitely going over there to the West Loop and checking it out. Cause uh, I loved it. I, I hung out there a couple of times. I went to, what was it? Green Street Barbecue or yeah. something like that? Or mm -hmm. Green Street Smoke. That was cool. I went to a couple of bars. And the Soho bars. House is over in that place area too. Soho House is over there too. So no, I, I got a chance to to see some things while I'm home. But yeah, that's where I I used to work. Um, you know, working on that show with Oprah. Um, and then uh, that was kind of short lived. Um, that was a good show. Maybe it was before its time because that was a good show. I think so. I mean, you know, we were we were pretty much like an all black cast. Uh, mm -hmm. But they had time. the gay women. They had, you know, they had a lot of different things going on that I felt like yeah. maybe it was no, the we, time. I think so. And then it was a period piece, too. And we were tackling, you know, issues that, you know, America wasn't really talking about at that right. time. There was things that we were discussing right. within the community. Uh, but overall, you know, the broader aspect of America, if you will, yeah. you know, this is before Black Lives Matter. And this is before, you know, people really started. Uh, sitting down and having discussions about our journey and race and you yeah. know, what we've experienced as a people. So it was short lived, but it was a great experience working with Oprah. Mm -hmm. um, immediately after that, I think um, I was blessed to work on the Jacksons where I played um, Michael Jackson in the Jacksons miniseries. And mind you, for your audience out there, they're probably saying, man, he's running his mouth. 
But no, for those of you all not. who don't know who Jason Weaver is, I'm just kind of giving you like a backstory so you'll understand what this journey has been and where I come from. Um, so no, I, I was I was blessed and honored to to be able to work on the Jackson miniseries. I played Michael Jackson uh, as a kid. Uh, I was personally selected uh, by Michael to play him in that miniseries. Oh, I didn't know uh, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, in order for you to play Michael Jackson, any of Michael's, um, he had to personally like select you, and, and it was a the auditioning process was kind of kind of strenuous. It was it was stressful, I should say, <laughs> um, because you had to get past like the producer and the director, and then you had to get the approval of the family, and then the final word when it came down to Michael in particular, Michael had to have the final word. So out of the three finalists, if you w will, that were sent, I was one of them that was sent to him to review my audition tape. And uh, yeah, he saw something in me that I guess he felt like I could do the job and bring justice you know, to, to the role and honoring his family and their legacy and him. And so, uh, yeah, he gave me the opportunity uh, to wow. work on that, on that uh, miniseries. So I did that. Immediately following the Jacksons miniseries, um, I had the pleasure and the honor of working on The Lion King, the original animated film. Uh, don't for people tell out there that I've don't... never seen The Lion King. You've never seen it? You got to see it. And please see the original when you get a chance. It's actually a really good film. This is my, and... my sister and my mom have been to the play. Of course, everyone has seen the movies. My yeah. actually, my girlfriend, who you probably know, Tasha Scott. You know, oh, her yeah. daughter, of, of course you do. Tasha, Tasha's tasha been on the show too. Tasha's okay. daughter, you know, was in the touring company of The Lion King. But yeah, I never okay. seen The Lion King. Oh no, you gotta see it. Well, in that case, when you eventually look at the film and you hear the song, I Just Can't Wait to Be King and Hakuna Matata, well, that's my voice. I was the singing voice for Young Simba. And um, nah, uh, Sir Elton John, you know, blessed me with that opportunity to be able to do that. I got a chance to work with him. And then wow. after that, you know, it just kind of went on from there. I did a show called Thea or with Thea Vidal and Brandy. Um, that was unfortunately another short lived kind of yeah. sitcom, but still at that time was a, a pretty popular show that was on ABC. Um, that's when I got involved with Motown Records, which is what you're familiar with, Dr. Renee, where I put out a- um, You guys LP have song. to look up Love Ambition. If you do not know this song, I'm sorry you don't, but now you do because I told you. So please oh, look yeah. it up. And that song please is the book. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I work with uh, I work with Motown Records on that, on Love Ambition. Uh, it is, for people out there that don't know, it's like a, a stepper's favorite in Chicago. So good. Uh, in our hometown, it's, it's one of those records that uh, continues to come on. That's played consistently, and I'm so appreciative, uh, you know, for the for the city, for the people of the city to stand behind it, and for for radio outlets too to continue to um, to yep. support that record. So I did that. Um, immediately after that, I did um, a show called Smart Guy that was yes. really popular on the WB network, and then eventually moved over to the Disney Channel and became like a Disney Channel favorite for a lot of people. The smart guy starred one of the Maori brothers, right? Yes, Taj Maori. Um, yep. And I and I got my my break with that because my manager at the time, Suzanne DePass, was the executive producer of both Smart Guy and Sister Sister. So but I auditioned, of course, like everybody else. Yeah, I of course. earned yeah. my role, um, but she was able to you know, present an opportunity uh, before me that allowed me to be a part of, you know, what a lot of people consider to be kind of like an iconic 90s show, like kids teen Look show. Look at this one, Jason. That is something. Can you see this? My kids watch oh, Smart yeah. Guy now. That's dope. <laughs> That's so dope. <laughs> Thank you, Eva. I appreciate it. Now that um, it was one of those, it was one of those shows that, um, again, sh uh, showed another example of, of the, the modern black fan and yes. how we live. Um, and in particular, uh, with seeing a black single father raising yeah. kids. Um, that, that was, was Professor rarely... Ogletree, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you know it was, I had to say that. It was a lot, it From was the a Parkers, lot yes, with... you guys. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> so we were, we were one of those shows that, um, 
was able to present, you know, the, the modern day black family and to be able to show a, a black single father raising his children, seeing his kids come up and, and in particular one of his kids being a prodigy, a genius. Exactly. So it really, um, it really resonated uh, not only with, with, with black audiences, but just audiences in general. People really, really love that show. So um, I did that and then Wait, pause for following. a second. We have to acknowledge Monique Spence. And she used to work in the music industry, which is probably, and she's in Chicago too. She's a Chicago zone. Whitney What's Young up, graduate. Monique? Yeah, oh, so you Monique, okay. she knows Love Ambition too. I, I'm telling you, people who know What's good music know this song. No, it's it's one it's one of those records. It's a um, hey, what's up, Bam? I see you in here too. <laughs> uh, uh, no, it's it's one of those records that you know it just it just still works. And even when I was back home shooting the shot for season four, I heard a couple of times on the radio, and I was blown away. I was like, yo, they really are still playing Love Ambition. So I'm honored, guys. Thank you. Um, <laughs> let's see. After so smart, smart guy, guy, after smart guy, I did um, Drumline. Ah. I was able to, um, I worked on that with Nick Cannon, Orlando Jones, uh, Zoe Zaldana, shout out to Dallas Austin, who was the executive producer uh, and kind of like the brainchild behind everything because yep. the story was loosely based around his his life, his high school experience of being in a band uh, in Columbus, Georgia. So we were able to put that within the HBCU setting, um, able to shine a light on um, the HBCU experience which was awesome. It was yet another project that was able to display a different side of our culture and our and our people that um, people outside of our community hadn't seen before, or maybe wasn't right. familiar with. Um, so yeah, I did that. And then in between that, I did, um, I had a, a record that I did with Chingy, or I should say Chingy was uh, gracious enough to allow me to uh, be a featured guest artist on a song called One Call Away that was on his album, his first album, I think it was called Jackpot or something like that. Um, anyway, uh, One Call Away uh, was a pretty successful, you know, R&B hip hop record. Immediately after that, I did ATL uh, with Tip and Lauren London. Thank you. Um, we shot that here in Atlanta. And then what else? After that, I did Lottery Ticket. I've done, uh, that was with Bow Wow. Um, yep. And the late, great Charlie Murphy. Um, what else? In between that time, I did a lot of independent films. Uh, one in particular that people really, really like and would always come on BET, and I think it still comes on BET now, called Love for Sale. And I did that with a, um, a production company down here. They were actually based in Wilmington, North Carolina at the time, but now they're here in Los Angeles. Shout out to Swirl Films. I worked oh, with yeah. Swirl Films on a, on a couple different projects um, during that time. And then, let's see, after that, yeah, after the independent films, and I really just started kind of um, focusing my energy on, um, on producing uh, and developing content uh, especially down here in Atlanta with it being, you know, the creative energy down here is so, so amazing. And the, and the people down here, um, as far as coming up with ideas, and of course there are more film and, and TV people here in the city than, the, than wow, there were yeah. before. Yeah. When I first moved here. So now I'm, I'm, I'm working with an amazing, uh, artist and animator by the name of Joshua Leonard, who has a, uh, a project that he developed called Team Supreme which is based around kids with disabilities and special needs, whose disabilities and special needs are turned into superpowers via the lead character scientist father. And so um, Joshua and I brought Team Supreme over to Lena Waste Company, Hillman Grad. Uh, we're currently situated over there. She is helping us to develop and package uh, the project to be put out to pitch. Shout out Look to at Lisa that Red Chicago. Donna. Look at that Chicago. Oh, no, it's so it's so real. <laughs> and we'll definitely get into that. I, I have so much more great things to say about Lena Wade. People have no idea, um, you know, the, the major and positive impact that she's had on my life in the past, like, I'd say five, six years. Our friendship has just been just amazing. So, um, no, she, she is currently um, helping us package that and get that together. I also have another animated series that I'm developing right now as well called The Secret Society, 
that I'm going to be rolling out soon. So all of those things are going on. And then the shy. <laughs> oh, wait, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Okay. Okay. We Are can we back? Uh, yep, we're good. Okay. Sorry yes, about that. Yes, and so of course the shy. And now Which, we have the when they the made the big on. announcement and they said you and Tabitha Brown were going to be in the shy. And the first thing I said is, oh my God, Jason Weaver's going home. <laughs> yes, yes. And I was I was very very excited um, when I got the call uh, to be on the show. I I was just uh, I was just really really happy that I could uh, number one work with people and be on a show that I, I genuinely respect. Um, unbeknownst to a lot of people, and I'll just kind of give this backstory about my experience with the shot. I was in the original pilot years oh, ago. Wow. This is when this, this is Lena and I first met. It was maybe about five, almost six years ago. And I remember when Showtime, they shot that. Yeah, I was, I was Chicago, there. I, I played, that. yeah, and I played Ronnie. I was originally cast as Ronnie. Oh, wow. uh, the character, yeah, the character then was written much younger, okay. way younger. Um, and instead of him being, um, you know, kind of like a conflicted, you know, kind of soul or whatever, my my Ronnie that was written for me was a lot more edgy. It was way more street um, and a, a little bit more, um, a little bit more aggressive. Um, the Ronnie that, you know, eventually, uh, played in the series, um, wasn't like that at all. It was a, right. it was a complete opposite, uh, approach to, to the role. But I think ultimately, uh, the network made the right decision to kind of break down the whole show and recast it and then build it out the way that, you know, they kind of felt they would be able to, to successfully reach an audience. Mm -hmm. So, but I was with the original pilot and unfortunately, um, when it did go to series um, in the first season, meet myself and the other cast members that were cast alongside with me weren't able to go along for that part of the journey. But um, Lena had assured me, she said, yo, you know, I, I, I think you're a brilliant actor. Like I've been a fan of your work for years. And she was like, and when the opportunity presents itself, like when I really get this show on its feet and I get it established the way it should be, and I'm able to kind of take the reins back again and present the show that I want to, the kind of show that I want to present. I'm going to come back and get you, and, and we're going to work, and we're going to do our thing. Sure enough, she she kept her word, and, and she's just amazing. And even the role that I'm, that I'm playing now, Shad, I think is a better fit, and I think it allowed me as an actor to display uh, more range uh, I totally probably than, agree. than what I would have I would have been able to do you know, with Ronnie. So um, everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. uh, like what we were discussing earlier, yep. Dr. Renee, you know, we, we like to be positive people and see the silver lining and things. And so, you know, just for people to know, because I know that's what that, that this show is all about. Mm -hmm. um, you know, things happen like that in life, you know, unexpected things where you think you may be going in one direction, you may be sidetracked and moved in a totally different direction, but fear not, because as long as you continue to move forward, and as long as you continue to believe in yourself and in what God has blessed you with, as far as whatever your gift is, whatever your purpose is, you will eventually fall in line with where you need to go. You will be aligned in a way where, you know, you'll be on your path and doing what you need to do. So my experience with the shy has definitely been that. I think this journey of, of working with Lena and being on the show has provided that confirmation and just letting go and letting God yep. and believing that, you know, if it's meant to be, it will be, and sure enough, everything came back around full circle. And again, I think um, this role uh, in the layers that this character has, has allowed me to just display a level of range as an actor that I've never been able to display before, that I've always wanted to display and to present before viewing audiences. And now I'm getting a chance to do it. And I'm very thankful uh, for the opportunity. And I'm thankful to everybody out there um, you know, who has provided positive feedback and who, you know, has locked back in with us and consistently, you know, comes in and, and hangs out with us week after week. I really appreciate everyone for, for their support because, uh, 
you know, we, we were really proud of the work that we've done this past season. And just to see people's reaction, to feel that, to have that kind of um, communication, you know, through social media where you're, you're getting that, that, that feedback in mm-hmm. real time. Uh, it's meant a lot to us as a cast and, and as an overall production. So I'm very thankful. Yeah. Very thankful. So that's that's me in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> For those of you all out there who don't know who I am, that oh, that is Jason Weaver in a nutshell. <laughs> but you guys, if you the Shy has a new episode coming out tomorrow, FYI. Um, the Shy is on Showtime. Yes. And this is like he said, the fourth season. The show has just been so good. It is just so good. I don't know. And I watched it, of course, because it was done in Chicago. And I love watching Chicago shows because usually I see my building or something I know. And and then I like The Shy because when it started, we really didn't know a lot of those actors. And, and a lot of that, like a lot of the kids came from Chicago. So it was really you know, and I actually went right. to, you know, the Bud Billiken Parade. Of course you do. And um, I met a lot of the kids mm-hmm. at the Bud Billiken mm-hmm. Parade one year. I met the whole, the, the children in the cast. And I think I have a picture with them and stuff. But, um, but yeah, they were at the breakfast that they have before the parade, the, you know, the media breakfast or whatever. And so, um, yeah, and the kids were really nice. And they literally were just kids. And they are now on this show. And the show is a hit. Yeah. So... And nah, they, I mean, uh, season, with Michael and Shimon. Jason, right, besides Jason on the show this season, Candy Burris is on the show, Layla, I mean, Lala Anthony's on the show. Um, yes. There's a lot of big people yes. that you'd be like, wait a minute, isn't that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. No, I think the, the thing about the shot is so awesome is that, yeah, you have those big names that are attached to it as well, who are kind of like driving the traffic to the show and, yeah. you know, providing the audience, if you will. But you have a lot of local hires that get hired on yeah. the shy. And I think for me, you know, being a born and raised Chicago and, and, and an actor that's come up out of Chicago, that warms my heart when, like, I come on set and, you know, I'm meeting, I'm meeting actors that, you know, from the city that are just trying to make their way, you know, trying right. to jumpstart their careers and they're getting a legitimate platform uh, to be able to do that and to kickstart. And the, all of these people that we work, work with are really, really talented, uh, whether they're like veteran talent or whether they're new talent coming up, especially with the kids. Um, man, I've, I've watched them grow, you know, from the time when they first started the show exactly. up yeah. until now and, and now getting a chance to work with them I mean, man, they they've grown exceedingly, and they're, they're they're amazing kids. They're actually really nice kids as well. On top of being uh, phenomenal actors, so now shout out to everybody back home that works on the show, even in the crew, because uh, everybody that's pretty much in the crew is from Chicago. Man, I love you guys. I can't wait to hopefully see y'all uh, uh, for season five coming up. So uh, no, nah, it's beautiful. Working on the shot is awesome. Yeah. The um so like you said it's great that you, I think it's great that your career didn't shoot up because they say what goes up really high might fall down. So <laughs> but it's been a nice steady Yeah, yeah. And you've been able to have a regular life. Now did you graduate from regular high school or you didn't? Yeah, no, I graduated uh from Thornwood High School. I, okay, that's I went what to somebody Thornwood said. For... Yeah, yeah. Is oh, shout you... out. Who is it? Dr. <laughs> Shanika Jones? Yeah. What's up? <laughs> Thunderbird for life. That's right. Now, um, it, it was it was funny because I I technically only went to Thornwood for maybe a year. I think it was like my freshman year because right after that, um, I moved to New York to to continue to work with Motown with uh, Andre Harrell. God rest his soul. Oh. Um, he had taken over Motown after leaving Uptown Records. Yep. So, um, when I was recording what would have been my second uh, LP with Motown, uh, he had requested that I move out to New York so that he could have daily interaction with me and that I could get, you know, catch a vibe with the songwriters and the producers that he had there. So I did like a year at Thornwood, went out to New York, and then the rest of the time that I was enrolled at Thornwood, I was in like a a home study program. So um, Thornwood really didn't have a home study program like that at the time. But they worked in coordination with another school called the American School. Okay. And they found some kind of interesting way to tie in their curriculum with the American School, which um, that's what they specifically did was 
uh, geared towards home study, uh, a home study program, either for kids that were just out of school, maybe because they had an illness or something like that, where they couldn't be present, or for people that didn't graduate or they wanted to earn their GED or whatever, what have you. Mm -hmm. There was a program for that within the American school as well. So they were just able to coordinate and Voltron together. And yeah, I, was, I uh, graduated from Thornwood. Unfortunately, I didn't attend the prom. I didn't attend the graduation. I was in California working, but no, I'm, I'm a proud Thunderbird and everybody from the wood, they know that. District 205, <laughs> what's up? Shout out to Thornridge, shout out to Thornton. Thought we can keep y'all. It's all love, it's all love. And shout out to South Holland, that's where I grew up. So shout out to South Holland, Dalton, Calumet City, Harvey, Hazelcrest, Matson, Olympia Fields, the whole South Suburbs. Um, much love to y'all. That, that, that's, that's where, where uh, Kiki Palmer grew up too, right? Did she? I think so. I think that somebody will say it in a minute, but I'm pretty sure that's where she grew up too. I think Harvey. Okay. Oh, I she's think, Harvey? I think so. I did not know yes, that. Yes, somebody just said Harvey that. World. As, I'm as pretty a, sure, yeah. Okay. No, and uh, Suzanne Douglas, unfortunately, who just recently passed, uh, yes. who was on the Parenthood. She's she's from Harvey, I think, or she was from Harvey, and she was a Thornton graduate, I believe. Okay. So no, there's a lot of there's a lot of phenomenal talent uh, that has come out of Chicago and mm -hmm. the surrounding Chicagoland area. Absolutely. Definitely, definitely. Like you said, like we said, Lena Waithe is from mm -hmm. the South Side, and yeah, there's a whole lot. Yep of talent in Chicago and no, now, Chicago, Chicago, Chicago shining. And, and yeah. now we are getting a chance to really, you know, really show that. Cause like what I was, you know, kind of, um, uh, talking about earlier back in the eighties and the nineties, uh, we would get overlooked, you know, people always knew that there was a major talent pool <laughs> that was there in Chicago, but for some odd reason, we just wouldn't get the look. We just weren't getting the opportunities. And those of us, excuse me, who were getting opportunities that came from the city, we had to move. We either had to go east yeah. or had to go west. So, you know, what's really exciting now is that people from Chicago can actually get discovered in Chicago and can mm -hmm. actually maintain and have a career in Chicago. And I just think that's awesome. I'm so happy for the, the new generation of performers that are coming out of the city now that, you know, have more opportunities available to them than what we had in the past. So I just think it's awesome. Yeah, there's lots of television and movies that are filmed right there in Chicago. We've got the casting agencies now in Chicago. Um, so there, there's just everything is right That's there. Right. Literally everything is right there. We got production companies. You have everything in yep. Chicago. In the little Midwest, who knew? <laughs> yeah. And, and, no, and, and, now, and now you have, you know, these kinds of, um, you know, pieces of technology that are available yes. to us now to where we can build an audience, you know, organically, just right in the comfort of our own living rooms now. So you're seeing, you know, a lot of guys um, uh, kind of ascending and, and becoming well-known. Like you got Corporate, uh, who I follow at Corporate, uh, who's on Instagram. He's a real funny comedian and actor. You got cats like Don Terrio, uh, who does like a lot of roasting and stuff like that. But, you know, these are all young guys from the city. Uh, who are just putting themselves out there, and their their, their work is is resonating with an audience, and, and they're they're winning, and they're they're really beginning to now create these opportunities um, that probably would have been impossible back in the eighties and nineties when I first right. started. So they're creating opportunities for themselves and the people around them. So it's it's just really encouraging to see. I was so happy and so encouraged when I when I came home and I was able to see the creative community there and how it's you know, thriving and, you know, and people are working together and looking to help one another and, you know, plugging each other with different things. It was just like, that's the Chicago that I, that I know and love. So it, it was great to see that this past year. Yeah. Um, so first of all, I have to remind people I forgot because of course I should have wrote a note, but you guys, please make sure you comment, like, and share because somebody needs some sort of uplifting, especially if it's a Chicagoan, so they can know that somebody can come from South Holland and look what he can do. And all these amazing yeah. people he's worked with and all of his accomplishments. So, and dreams do come true. You know, he said when he was a child, he watched ET and he wanted to be on the screen. What happened? So, as you know, the show is to motivate and inspire you. So please share with somebody because somebody else might need this. And of course, you know, you have the super chat 
available in um, YouTube, in YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube. Thank you to everyone that is watching on Facebook and LinkedIn. I see you in your comments. Thank you so much. And um, so, so um, do you think that you will do another record? You know what's so funny? <laughs> I just now you had a conversation with Lena. Uh, no, no, I just, I just had a conversation with Lena about that uh, before we wrap, because she now has a label, uh, a label infant at Def Jam. She has a joint venture deal with Def Jam, Hillman Grad Records. Wow. So she and I had gone out to lunch because she flew into town and um, you know to check on us and see what we were doing. And so she and I went out to lunch, and she was like, "Yo." You ever thought about doing music again? I was like, well, yeah, I mean, because I love music and, and um, it's a passion of mine. Um, you know, just being completely transparent and honest, the only reason why I hadn't pursued it any further or been more aggressive about it was because at, at a particular time, the artist couldn't reach the listener directly, like how right. you can now. Uh, it was way more harder to go independent. Um, you know, it, it was way more expensive to go independent because you had to have a real infrastructure in place in order to be able to effectively get music out. But now you have these wonderful tools like cell phones, and iPads and laptops that can put you directly in contact, you know, with the people that, that rock with you and, and follow your work. So, um, I think I am going to do it. She, she she was saying that it would be great if we could do it together hopefully we can um because i love lena that's my sister and you know especially if i'm able to work with hillman grad uh, on the music side that that mm -hmm. would be awesome um but that will be depending upon what her schedule is like and yeah. you know and all of that you know how the business right. is so yeah. we'll, we'll see if it works out but uh god forbid if i don't move in that direction i will be putting something out independently because when I do music, I do it from the heart and I'm not coming from a place where I'm trying to be something that I'm not or somebody that I'm not. I just want to do good music that, that comes from my spirit, that comes from my soul. Um, music that, um, you know, resonates with me and that makes me feel good. And that I know people within my age group would be able to relate to and understand. And it can still be cool. Like, I'm not saying I don't, you know, I don't want to cater to a young audience or anything right. like that. Like, I'm not saying it at all. Like if you are young and if you rock with me, like, I love it. Like, that's dope. But I'm, I'm looking to find a happy medium between um, satisfying the audience that's been rocking with me all these years, coupled with, you know, the new generation that may just be catching wind of who I am, either based on my involvement with the shy or just being made aware of my involvement with the Lion King or what have you. So I'm, I'm, um, I'm in the process. I've actually been in the studio since I've been back in Atlanta and I've just been, you know, kind of experimenting in, in seeing where it could go because it, it just has to be right. And it definitely yeah. has to be a, a true representation of where Jason Weaver is at right now, you know, and, and the things that matter to me and the kind of stories that I want to, that I want to tell and that I want to share. Mm -hmm. So I'll have something out soon. And when I do, you'll be the first to know. Thank and maybe you. I'll even come on the show and, and play some songs. Thank you. And That'd we'll, be awesome. we'll get a, we'll get the uh, real time reaction with your viewers. Yeah. That's awesome. You guys, in case you didn't hear about the Lion King, Jason's brilliant mother, because of course she's a black woman. She has to be brilliant. She is the one who said, that instead of him getting one check, he should get royalty checks. And so yeah. it has been everywhere. If you Google it, it's been, you know, all of a sudden it came out in articles, I think last year, that this is what she did. And yeah. they did that. And it was obviously a very smart thing to do because the Lion King has went on to become everything. <laughs> no, it, it, uh, again, shout out to my mom, my, my mother, um, from the very beginning has been instrumental in, I mean, not only Wait, just uh, one second, professional Jason, life, but just in my this. life in general, personal. Pause one second, you gotta see this one. Okay. Hi, Anita. Well, he represents the shine so very well, FYI. Oh, Anita, I appreciate you. <laughs> That's love. Another Chicagoan. <laughs> Shout out to Anita Bennett. That's love. <laughs> yeah, you know what, and that, that means so much to me, man. Like, 
when Chicago stands up, because you know how we are. Uh -huh. If we don't like something, <laughs> we're going to let you know. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But when we like something or when we like somebody, we'll let you know that too. Yeah. So Chicago always keeps it real. So thank you, Anita. I appreciate you. That means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Um, but what yeah, was I saying? Mom, I got, your mom. Oh, your mom. my mother. That's, that's amazing. Now, my mother, my mother uh, you know, has just been with me since day one, you know, not only coaching me through the business, but coaching me just in life in general. And, uh, you know, it takes a strong black woman uh, to help, especially when when a, when a young man is, is coming up. And, you know, of course, black fathers are necessary because I'm a father myself. So we, of course, play a very important role Amen. in the family structure and the family dynamic. So let, 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 me, let me preface what I'm about to yeah. say first and foremost by saying that. Shout out to all the Black fathers and Black men out there as well who are in, involved in their families. Um, unfortunately for me, uh, coming up, well, not unfortunately, but the way circumstances lay themselves out to be. I was raised in a single parent family home. And my mother was the person who raised me and instilled principles in me and, you know, helped to, to guide me and put me on a path, um, not only towards a successful career, but also a successful life, um, stressing the importance of education, stressing the importance of responsibility, um, accountability, owning up to your mistakes, learning from your mistakes, um, and just being a man, you know what I mean? Like, it was a black woman that did that for me. It was black women, it was my mother, it was my aunts and it was my grandmother uh, who were who were the people who who raised me. Uh, and so when it came down to decisions like what she made with the, the Lion King, you know, it's so funny because they go, man, your mom, you know, she was brilliant for making that move. Um, and she was. But mm -hmm. at the same time, too, my mother was was very well versed and highly educated as to how the business is supposed to go. And in particular, the record industry, because she was a recording artist prior to that. And then it already generated, you know, a, a great deal of success and money due to her involvement in the jingle industry. So she knew how things were broken down and how things were ultimately like monetized, how things trickled down. And it was very important to her as it related to my involvement in, in the industry that, you know, yeah, being part of a successful project is cool, but a successful project to really stand to benefit from it for the rest of his life, that that's the goal. You you, you want to have your, your child or whoever you're working, even if you're representing somebody, if you're a manager or agent, when you go and look for work for a client, you want them to be able to, to be a part of something that will be able to yield some kind of residual income for many years, you know, later to where, yeah. because you never know what your journey is going to be. You have hot moments and you have cold moments, or you may just have a moment where you say, I want to be out of the, the business altogether, period. But you should you should still be able to benefit from the work that you've done in the past, especially when it's generated billions upon billions of dollars. Right, right. So in, in that case with the Lion King, my mother was just able to, you know, kind of see ahead of the curve um, with the wisdom and the knowledge that she had of being in the industry and and she guided me in the, in the right way and to where that, that me being involved with that film, uh, still it benefits me and my family to this day. You know, that that's something that is a legacy project and that will continue to go on and bless my family and my son, you know, even after I'm gone. So, um, no, I'm thankful to my mother for everything that she's, she's ever done for me. I, I couldn't have done any of this without her. I mean, not only just having a, a successful career, but just being able to maintain and be a man, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And being, a, and being a strong black man. Like I credit my mom for being there and helping to guide me, you know what I'm saying, through that. Cause it's not, it's not easy out here. You know what I mean? It's not easy just being black in general and living in this country and dealing with the things that we have to deal with on a daily basis, whether it's dealing with, you know, the criminal justice system or corrupt law enforcement and racism and right. a lot of challenges that all of us as, as black people and people of color face every day. But on top of that, you know, you have other challenges of being in the business as well and being black and having to persevere and, you know, jump over those particular hurdles that are in that aspect of life. And my mother uh, has been the main one to help guide me through all of that. So shout out to my mother, Marilyn, AKA Kitty Haywood. Shout out to the Haywood family. On the south mm -hmm. side of Chicago, on East uh, East 71st in South Michigan, 
If y'all know, y'all know. If y'all know my family over there, that's where we from, Park Manor. So, um, yeah, I love my mom. <laughs> that's awesome. So, has your son ever shown any interest in the business? I know he just he just turned eighteen. Yeah. Is that what it was? I saw on your Instagram. No, he he's he's twenty now. Twenty. He's okay. 20. Yeah. Uh, he's actually he's yeah he's actually in Los Angeles right now. Um, he has expressed an interest in wanting to get involved in the industry because he's pretty much grown up on set, you know, being with me. <laughs> um, he's expressed an interest in wanting to do some on camera work, so we're entertaining that. Uh, but I'm also grooming him to be like really behind the scenes, um, potentially as an executive. Uh, Cause we need more of us in, in oh, that realm definitely. or in that capacity of entertainment. We need, yeah, we need more of us who have the knowledge, who understand the way that the business works, um, who have the kind of personalities and the kind of swag where they can, you know, bring people together um, and create uh, big opportunities for, for other actors and, and, and other people that are trying to come up in the game. So that's what I'm really stressing to my son about. I want him to be passionate about whatever it is that he's doing. I want him to love whatever it is that he's doing. And no matter what he does, I'm always going to be supporting him. I'm always going to have his back. I'm going to be behind him 110%. But right now, we're specifically I'm trying to groom him in a certain kind of way to walk in this particular path. Because I think that's something that he will really excel in because he's very, very smart, very intelligent. He's got a great heart and he's all about connecting the dots and helping people in some kind of way. So I think he would excel in that. But, um, you know, if he happens to audition for something and get a role and, you know, now he's, you know, on screen talent, I'm for that too. At the end of the day, I just want him to be happy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I want him to be healthy and happy and safe. And I want him to live a long, fulfilling, just great life. So, you know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, but for those people out there, uh, who do care, please pray for us, pray for my son, pray for Amen. us. Um, Cause we, um, you know, we're trying our best out here and I'm, I'm trying to make sure that we have another strong young black man that's out there making moves and, and doing things to help elevate our people as well. So just pray for us y'all. Yeah. He, he, sometimes he's a little bit stupid. Sometimes I, I got smack him upside the head. And, you know, he gets a little, a little hard headed. Even now he in Los Angeles moving around and, I just had a 45 minute lecture yesterday with him, but he gonna be all right, y'all. Just pray for us. Just pray for us. We gonna be all right. Shout out to my son, Jalen. I love you, buddy. <laughs> Hilarious. 45 minute lecture, oh boy. <laughs> oh, this is about everything. No, when I have a lecture with him, it, it can be about anything, but it'll be anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. And, and I always know when I'm going on for too long because he'll just get to looking at his eye watch. And then I had to be like, it, it, do you got somewhere that you got to be? But yeah, I'm one of those dads. I'm one of those dads. Cause, and it's just because I know the importance of that. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother sat me down. Right. You know what I mean? When I need to be sat down, my mother or my grandmother or my aunts or my uncle, Uncle June, they would sit me down and have a conversation with me. And even if I was bored, so I was making it seem like I wasn't listening. That stuff was going in, you know what I mean? And and to this day, a lot of those things um, that I was taught in a, in, a, in a lot of those lectures, um, they stuck. And, and I'm still here today because of that. You know what I mean? If I didn't listen, I probably wouldn't be here still, but because they cared to sit me down and give me real instruction and real insight and advice. That's why I'm still here at 41 years old right now, going on 42, I'll be 42 and what, eight days? So, oh, yes. um, no, I've, yes, I've, I've been really, really blessed. So I know, I know the importance of that, of, you know, I don't, I don't want to be over my son's head because, you know, he's now entering into his manhood. And I think, um, you know, it, it would cripple him if I was one of those kind of fathers that was just constantly on him. Because you got to let a man be a man, you know, mm -hmm. at the same time, you, you have to let a young man or a young person make their mistakes. Um, so, so I get it, but I also believe in being involved as a parent. Yeah. And so that's where I'm at. So for people out there that may be looking at this and, and saying to themselves, man, this sounds like Jason's a crazy dad. No, I'm not a crazy dad. I'm just a concerned father and I'm going to make sure that my child is raised right and it, it is going to be successful. That's all. 
But you know what? Um, you mentioned something because uh, Cherry Johnson was on the show and I was saying people, the kids that came up with you guys, Cherry and Tasha, and all, there was a lot of those kids that didn't make it, one, to see 30, let alone 40, or two, they made it and they're struggling something terrible. And so I know that you credit your mom to mm -hmm. the reason that you were able to stay on the right path and didn't, you know, fall off into any of that, um, you know, drug scene or any of that craziness. Because, like, I've been watching reruns of different strokes every night. Oh, and it's crazy that the only person alive mm -hmm. is Todd Bridges. Yeah, I mean, it's... Um... Well, it, it, at the same time too, that I'm that I'm I'm crediting my mother. I gotta give all honor, glory, and praise to God as well, Amen. first and foremost. Um, it, you know, it, it's been the power of prayer uh, from family and friends, but also God being present in my life, even when I have gone astray in certain areas. Uh, and and I have. I mean, I've mm -hmm. I've had my fair share of experiences, like any other average person that you know uh during adolescence and coming into right. young adulthood and all that i've had experiences but fortunately they weren't experiences that were like you know made some kind or created some kind of irreparable damage mm -hmm. or to where i couldn't bounce back from it or you know to where i got hurt or potentially lost my life um i've just really really been blessed in in that sense and i think that um kids of our generation that were in entertainment, particularly particularly in the 90s, um, we looked at the experiences that child actors had in the 80s and the 70s. Because around the time that stories about Todd Bridges and Gary Coleman and all these different young stars, those tragic stories that were, that were coming to, to the surface or to light was around the time that we were like really popular on TV right. and in that realm. So we were able to go, oh man, like, you know, that's really, really unfortunate, but I definitely don't want to go down that path. All right, let me like keep my nose to the ground and like stay focused on what I got to do. And, and, you know, for me personally, I've just never been into the drug scene like that. Um, I've never found anything fascinating about that. Now, credit, now mind you, because I don't view it as a drug, I am a cannabis consumer, but I've never... I've never looked at cannabis in, in that regard. I'm talking about drugs like right. pills and cocaine and heroin and stuff like that. Um, no, I've just never had an interest in um, in wanting to be a part of that lifestyle because I saw how many lives it negatively affected in Hollywood. And in, in all honesty, whatever high that I would get as a kid, just being all set was being able to work. You know life. what I mean? Like that, yeah, just life. Like to me, that was the high. And I wanted to keep that high going. And I knew the only way to do that was like to be professional, to stay healthy, to stay fit. You know what I mean? And so I just never had any interest in that. And then on top of that, I, 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 don't, I never wanted to disappoint and still don't. I don't want to disappoint my mother. I don't want to disappoint my family. I don't want to disappoint my fans. I don't want to disappoint the Black community. I recognize the unique position that I've been placed in, especially representing you know, black men on screen and on camera. And, and and I want the world to know that we are excellent at all times. Some of us may fall short in, in certain ways, but well, man, we're kings. And I always want to represent that, you know what I mean? To the best of my ability. Now that, that doesn't mean that I won't make mistakes. Right. Um, I'm pretty sure maybe in the future there will, there will be something that I've said or done that may disappoint people in some kind of way or have them looking at me differently. I mean, I, God forbid, but I just know that's how life goes, but I will never, what I can assure people is that I will never put myself in a position uh, to where I'll just willingly like just embarrass myself and embarrass those people in the community that stood by me for so many years. So no, nah, and, and in that regard too, y'all, and I, and I mean this sincerely, pray for me, please. Um, Cause it's, it's, it's not easy out here. Um, and you never know what life is going to throw at you. But I know the power of prayer and I know that God is real. And so if y'all continue to pray for me as I'm going through my journey, as I will continue to pray for y'all, uh, we'll all be okay. Mm -hmm. So I'll just put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Well, this has been fabulous. I thank you so much for this. I'm so glad. Bam, thank you again for putting this together. And Clinton, thank you so much. Um, this has been amazing. Thanks, and Sarah. you guys know. This is the Ask Dr. Renee Show. Um, you guys hopefully have subscribed to the channel. 
hit the notification bell if you want to know when I have a new video. I do not have a guest for next week. And actually, we have some stuff going on. So I'm not sure we're going to come live next week. But you guys will join my list, I hope. Um, my email list, you can join at, um, hold on, I'm going to send it to you because I'm not going to remember the number. It's text 66866. Um, there it is. Text live life to 66866. And you can join my email list. And the email list will tell you when the next video, what it's about or whatever. And, oh, for those that didn't see, if you're on the list and you saw, I was on BNC, Black News Channel. It's a new network, kind of like CNN, but it's all black news 24 hours a day. I was on yesterday talking about Delta variant of COVID. And so that video is on my YouTube channel. Um, you can see that. And crazy thing, we were interrupted by the president, Joe Biden. I said, well, I've been interrupted by worse people. This is a great thing. <laughs> interrupted by the president. So we didn't even get to sign off and say goodbye. So if you notice the video ends abruptly, that's why, you guys. But thank you, everyone, who's been buying my book. I appreciate it. And I will see you guys soon. Thank you so much, Jason. This was awesome. Oh. And can I can I just say can yes. I just say no one and last everyone thing make to, sure you follow audience? Jason. I forgot it's Jason Harv Weaver oh, yeah. on Instagram. Please yeah, follow it, him. It's it's Jason Weaver, I T S Jason Weaver on Instagram and Twitter. Uh Dr. Renee, thank you so much for taking the time out today to have a conversation with me. Thank you to your audience, to everybody out there who, whether you've been supporting my work since the, the very beginning. We can't hear you. <laughs> Hold on, there we go. There it is. Okay, we're back. Okay, yeah. I'll make it short and sweet. Uh, okay. just thank you to everybody out there, even if you're just being made aware of my career and my work now via uh, Dr. Renee, I appreciate you. Thank you for, for all of your kind words that I've been receiving on social media regarding the shy. You guys continue to rock with us. As a matter of fact, I'll be live tomorrow for the after show of the shy. I'll be joined by Jasmine Davis, uh, Michael Epps, who plays uh, young Jacob on the show and Yolanda, Yolanda Ross. Um, so you guys, please tap in with us tomorrow after the show, I'll be taking your questions. We'll just be having conversation like what me and Dr. Renee had today. So thank you guys. God bless all of you. And listen, and that's the whole point of this show as well. Man, continue to see the silver lining in everything. Think positively, no matter what, no matter how dark it may get, there is always light at the end of the tunnel. What is meant for you will be for you. You don't have to rush anything. Let go. Let God. I know that's a cliche term nowadays or phrase. But it's real, though. Mm -hmm. It's real. And if you move on that frequency, the things that you do want and desire, they will come into your life. But you can't stress over it. Otherwise, you'll you'll bring yourself down mentally, physically, spiritually, the whole nine. You got to work on a frequency of always being being uh, looking forward to the best and to the brightest. And if you do that, I guarantee you, it will come to fruition in your life. It will manifest in your life. So. Shout out to you, Dr. Renee. I love the show and what Thank it's about. You. Stay teaching, Thank educating, you. enlightening, and uplifting people on here. God bless you. Thank you. I will do. Thank you, guys.